Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander and in this video we're going to go over the 3D MID capabilities in Altium Designer. Now with this new capability comes a new document file type and that is the 3D PCB document. To add that to your project, right click on your project, go to add new to project and select PCB 3D. You'll be prompted to select either a step or IGIS part file, press OK, select your model file and press open. Altium Designer will then load up that model where you can now begin to use it as your 3D substrate or your board where you can place components, route, and create your product. This is the board we're going to be using today. And now that we have our board, we do need to add components to it. And this can be done in a few ways. We can use the manufacturer part search panel, or we can use the components panel. All you have to do is just click and drag from the panel onto your board. And you'll notice that as I'm moving component along my board, it's changing its orientation to match the curvature of my board, thus remaining within contact. In addition to chip-like components we just placed, we can also place things like footprints for antenna. But of course, the best way to bring in components is by using an ECO, just as you would a 2D project. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll import our changes. And you'll notice that all my components, nets, pins, and net information is coming from my schematic as this is schematic driven. We'll execute our changes and start to place components on my board. And to do this, all I have to do is just click and drag. Now that I have my components placed, I do want to clean this up a little bit. As you can see, my components aren't quite aligned properly and the rotation is off. To do this, I can use a grid or a sketch. Let's do a grid first. So in the properties panel, I'll go ahead and enable my grid. I can change the sizing of the grid as well as the plane kind. I have XY, XZ, YZ, and also UV. The UV plane kind really helps when you want to route along the natural lines or curves of your surfaces. So you'll notice that I have these curved surfaces here on my border and I have my grid line running down the center. You'll see that over here as well. So on these curved surfaces, I have the grid line running right down the middle. But for us right now, we're going to use the XZ plane kind. And to make my adjustments, all I need to do is just click and drag my components and my cursor will snap along the grid lines as well as the grid vertices. And to better see this, let's go ahead and turn off the 3D models. I did this by pressing the 2 key. And if you want to re-enable this, press the 3 key. And here you can see my cursor snapping to the vertices. I also have this handlebar here, which handles the rotation. And this also snaps to the vertices and grid lines. It's really my cursor, so wherever I have my cursor, that will, that's actually doing the snapping. So it doesn't matter if I'm working in routing or uh, component placement, it's really the cursor. There we go, so now I have my components aligned with my grid. Next, let's talk about doing the same thing, but with a sketch. And a sketch is just that, it's a 2D drawing projected onto a 3D object. I created this using my mechanical CAD tool. I brought that into Altium Designer and all I have to do is turn it on. So to do that, let's first turn off our grid and then we can enable our sketch. And remember my cursor snaps to not only the grid, but the sketch as well. And there we go, now I have used this sketch to reconfigure the placement of my components. And now we can begin to route. To help with routing, we can use these connection lines. You'll notice that each connection line has a different color and that is related to the individual nets. So one specific net has one specific color. When routing, I do want to actually turn this off and instead use my net color override. And what that will do is it will make sure that the copper related to those individual nets will take on those color characteristics. So if I go to the PCB, 
I can turn on net color override for all of my nets just by checking these on. And you'll notice that the color of the copper has changed to match the connection lines. So now I can go ahead and hide all of my connection lines, yet the copper coloring remains the same. And one thing I did want to mention uh, before we do routing is you can move multiple components at once. Just wanted to let you guys know you can do that. So to begin routing, you can go to the route menu or you can use the shortcut control W. And again, my cursor will follow the, um, the grid and sketch lines. So you can follow the sketch lines. You can create an arbitrary path of your own. And what's really nice about using a sketch is the ability to follow curved sketch lines. So for instance, if I go over here, I can follow this curved sketch. And very quickly, I can create these very nice curved routing lines. I do want to mention that routing does follow some of your design rules, like your clearance and width rules. And you can change how you handle obstacles in the preferences. So you can do, you know, uh, ignore or walk around obstacles. So if we go to the preferences, we can have ignore or walk around. So let's do walk around and we can see how this works. So if we enter into interactive routing mode, you'll notice that I'm walking around my obstacles here. And I also do want to show routing with the grid. So let's do that. Let's enable our grid and show how we can route along that grid line. And if you don't like how a trace looks, you can always adjust it after the fact. And I do want to mention that you can use a batch DRC to run and check for trace width and minimum copper clearances. So now let's move on to placing copper regions. You can place copper regions through the place menu. And again, you can use um, the grid as well as a sketch. So we have the grid and let's show the sketch as well. And for this, I want to follow this curved sketch here. So first I'm going to delete this trace and start to place down my copper region. And again, my cursor snaps to this sketch. And so very quickly, I can create these very nice curved areas of copper. I also want to mention that um, when you're doing placement and routing, you can also replace or modify your substrate file after the layout has already been started. So now that we have our components placed and we've routed things, we've, we've placed our copper, what we can do is output our information. We can output a uh, 3D step file with all of our copper information and also a text file for our 3D pick and place file. All we need to do is go to file and export, click on 3D MID, give it a name and save it. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and open up that step file and the 3D pick and place file. Here I have my step model with all of my copper information. And you can see that here as well. So I have all the pads, traces, copper region, everything is here. I also have my 3D pick and place file, which shows my X, Y, and Z uh, coordinates, as well as my rotational vectors. And it's important to note that we output in the required data format for the uh, LDS or laser direct structuring manufacturing process. So we do have this uh, step assembly with the substrate and copper as separate parts and the copper as a zero thickness surface. So we have everything you need to create your product. And that's it. So thank you very much for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.